All right. Um, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to say call on Yahweh. Bashum, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. That's all praise to the most high in the name of his only begotten son, who the world is going to call Jesus Christ. Um, as you see, it's Taz Rock. Though nobody is watching, still for people who might watch in the future, right? So, as you can see by the title, Common Misconceptions About the Law and the Laws That You Might Not Know. Um, it is important to understand what's going on, right? So, uh, boom, shalom, shalom, shalom. Who is that? Let's see. Shalom, shalom. So, um, just to get started, first and foremost, again, misconceptions about the law and laws you might not know. Let me get started. I am not thinking. Oh, that's why. So, boom. So, Deuteronomy 22 and 15, it says, uh, it's like enough 15, 5. Um, this one is very popular, right? And women look at other women because of this a certain way. They think that they're better than another woman because of this. They feel more um, godly than another woman because of this. And in that all actuality, you are looking at your sister wrongfully, though what you are doing and what she is doing is completely lawful, right? So Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The man shall not wear that which pertains unto or slacky. the woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right? Um, give me one second, y'all, one second. Yeah. Right. So when you look at this through the um, casual eye, you might say that a woman cannot wear anything outside of a dress. Right. <clears throat> Let me tell you how that's prob problematic just by common sense. If I, a grown man, right, borderline mid 30s, if I put on women's pants, the Akim that I hold camp with, wouldn't call me anything else but a effeminate nigga, right? If I were to put on a woman's shirt, they would say that I'm going off, right? Because that is not what a man should wear. I'm not wearing a man's attire, right? Those weren't made for a man. They are made for a woman. So again, if I put on women's pants, they would question whether if I'm heterosexual or homosexual, right? If I'm wearing women's pants. So to say that a woman cannot wear pants because she's wearing that which pertains to a man, I'm sorry, but you sound ridiculous, right? You sound unreasonable. Let me see something. Move. Shalom. I can't see who that is, but I'm going to check on my phone in a second, right? So again, it's nonsense, right? But if a woman were to put on man's pants, that's different. If a woman were to put on, you know, um, like a dyke, right? She's dressing like a dyke. If I go out there, you know, with, you know, tights, the woman's tights, again, that's something that pertains to a woman. All right, but let's go into the word, right? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto. Let's look at this. Right, so 
the translate Strong's uh, H thirty six twenty seven in the following manner, right? So these are words that are used. Um, it's the same word, but it's different words. It's used as right. It's used as vessel, instrument, weapon, jewel, arm bearer, stuff, thing, armor, furniture, carriage, bag, right? When you look at the biblical uh, usage, it says article, vessel, implement, utensil, article, object, utensil, implement, um, not pronouncing that, implement of hunting or war, implement of music, implement tool of labor, equipment, yoke of oxen. None of this says pants, right? None of this says pants. When you look at the Strong's definition, something prepared, i.e. any of... Uh, Paratus, as in a, a you know, dress, vessel, or weapon. Where am I? Or weapon, arm bearer, artillery, bag, carriers, furnace, furniture, instrument, jewel that is made one from another. Boom. So all this is, it, it sounds a lot like arm bearer and weapons, right? That's just that which pertaineth unto, right? So a woman cannot wear these things. A man, right? That which pertaineth unto a man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, so I can see if somebody's comments, and I should probably look it up on my phone as well. Right? Three comments Shalom, Marshall, and Shalom, Mari. Right? So, um, this word man is geber. Uh, it also is used as man, uh, mighty, man child, everyone, man, strong man, a warrior, right? Emphasizing strength or ability to fight, which is what warriors do. Strong's definition pro properly a valiant man or warrior, generally a person, simply everyone, man, or <clears throat> Uh, everyone, man, and mighty. Give me one second, y'all. Right, so when you're looking at these words, right, it's always talking about war. So when it says that a woman cannot wear that which pertains unto a man, that's that warrior's garment. Right, you cannot wear a warrior's garment, not pants. There are such things as woman pants, kid pants, baby pants, infant pants, grown man pants. Right, work pants, casual pants, good looking pants, goofy pants. You have a lot of pajama pants. You have a lot of different types of pants that are suited for women and suited for men and suited for children. Stay in your lane, right? You guys are adding unto the word when you say that a woman cannot wear pants. Okay, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, right? Stop wearing skirts and shit, nigga. Um, but again, a garment, right? Just like how IUIC has their garments, right? You can fly. That is for a man, right? You, if, if you look at their garments, it looks like they have a breastplate, you know, a, a, a girdled belt. You know what I'm saying? They're covering their legs and shit like that. Because when you go to war, who has their legs out? All right? It's common sense. So none of it is talking about pants. It's saying that a man or a woman cannot wear a warrior's garment. Right, a woman cannot do what a man does. That laboring garments, we can't wear that. Right, woman should be dressed modestly, not in the field. Right, another one. First Corinthians. Um, First Corinthians, eleven. Slacky, yeah. I'm trying to look at my phone while I'm doing this. I would show my face, but I just got off of work on this lovely Saturday and I got paint all over me. All right. So, boom. First Corinthians 11 to 6, right? So, we got rid of the whole pants situation, which is BS, right? So, ladies, stop looking down on another woman who's wearing pants. You can't show me in the law where it's saying that, right? Because, again, you would have to be as a child. Right. That's how you're going to have to think as a child. If you honestly say that a man can wear a woman's pants and that 
is pertaining to a man. Give me one second, y'all. Pretty sure this is my office. Give me one second. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, this nigga said you outside on the chat. Uh, yeah, if you want to read this one, go on. Put my hand in. Nigga ain't get to work. Came straight to work. Slaggy, I'm gonna go back on mute. Give me about two minutes, yo. All right, Salaki so again, y'all. Um, right, we have an officer who just pulled up. Yeah, I needed some power in the video. Yeah, oh, see, see, <laughs> hold on, I'm finna kick this nigga out. I'm playing y'all. All fun and games, right? So, what was that? So, First Corinthians 11 and 6, right? Another misconception, right? For if the woman be not. Uh, let me start up now. Uh, 11 and 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. All right. So, first and foremost, uh, a lot of people say if you have hats on, if you have a beanie on, if you have a do-rag on, a hood on, a man cannot pray or prophesy. I mean, he can't read the Bible. He can't talk about God. I was watching the one video. They said he can't even listen to the word of God if he has his head covered. Here's why that's problematic. Show me this in the law. All right. Let me, let me show you something. I'm going to show you one. Okay. Let's do this because that's what they're speaking about. Where do we find the law of God? Lord in Christ. Okay, I'm just going to say it because I don't know what they got going on. You find the law of God. Okay, didn't want to do that. How do you pull up all the damn... Oh, uh, what is this? Okay, cool. You find the law of God in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the first five books, right? From Exodus to Deuteronomy or Exodus to Numbers and when Moses first gave the law. Deuteronomy being the second law, right? Just reiterated in Genesis, he gives us one of the first laws being fruitful and multiply, right? So here's where you find the law, not way over here in First Corinthians. So when you're reading First Corinthians 11, you can't imply that is a law because we never see this being uh, uttered by the words of Moses, the Father, or Christ, right? Do you want to read? Yeah. Um, Have you got uh, Caiaphas or David? Yeah. No, I just I just read this right now. I got a cold one though, in Zechariah. Um, but verse uh, five it says, "But every every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all. For that for that is even all one as if she were shaven." Right. So, again, implying that this is speaking about <clears throat> the laws of God is terrible because this is Paul. And Paul is writing a letter 
right? And this letter is unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. So this is a letter addressed to certain people at a church at a certain location. What about his letter to the Romans? What about his letter to the Galatians or Ephesians or uh, Philippians or the Colossians or, or the Thessalonians? What about these? Why don't we see him reiterate what he's talking about in all these um, epistles that he's having? Because it's not a law. He's simply commanding the people at the Church of Corinth let's go back, not to do something. Because the men were wearing this, right? This is something that a man should not be wearing. Right? This is what they're wearing is Greek veils. So he's telling them, yo, stop all this. Why? Verse 16. But if any man seems to be contentious, we have no such customs, neither the churches of God. We don't do these things. Right? But watch this. Again, talking about that Greek veil. Come on, you got the uh, David? 1 Samuel 15. Yeah, 15. All right. So, boom. First Samuel 15, starting at 30. All right. This is David. Go ahead. This is First Samuel chapter 15, verse 30. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel. And turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. And said, Samuel, bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately. And Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. Where is it? This is not it. Hold on, my bad, my bad, my bad. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, y'all. I could have swore. It might be second. Oh, it is second Samuel. My bad. It is second Samuel. So like you, y'all scratch that out of your notebook if you wrote it down in second Samuel 15 and 30. It's a dog's fault. Yeah. Sure. Hey. <laughs> second Samuel 15 and 30. And David went up, went up by the center of Mount Olivet and wept as he went up and had his head covered. And he went barefoot, and all the people that was with him covered every man his head, and they went out weeping as they went out. Wait, wait, wait. So you tell me that David was la uh, uh, lamenting? He, he was weeping, right? A time of mourning. And he himself covered his head, plus the men that was with him covered his head. So you tell me David and all these men were sinning? All right, keep reading. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom, and David said, O Lord, I pray thee, mm -hmm. turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Right, so now he's praying. So this, right, I don't know why I got rid of it, is going completely against Paul. Right, so now we have a contradiction in the Bible, right? Either A, Paul is falsely prophesying. Or not falsely prophesying, he's adding unto the law. Or B, David is breaking the law. Or there's option C, where this is not talking about a law of God, but rather an order at the church of Corinth because they were doing certain things. And this is David working within the realms of keeping the law of God. Right? So David is covering his head along with every man, and he's prophesying, or not prophesying, he's praying saying, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Uh, read, you still got it? You can read right here. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel 15, verse 32. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshiped God, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. So he, again, he's worshiping God on top of this mountain. Right. So, again, if this is a law that is. Or not, this is law, this is something that. 
that's going against the law, why is David doing it? Right? A man after the most high's heart is doing this. Right. And we understand where David went off at, and it wasn't covering his head. Right. The man murdered somebody and committed adultery. What was? Right. David, he murdered um he had him killed. Yeah, he had him killed. What was his name? Um uh, not Hezekiah. Uriah. Uriah. Uriah's a hit type. Right. Killed a man, right? Ordered a hit on him and took his rib. Right? So boom. Go to that Leviticus. Um, the high priest? Yeah. 21. I got you. This is Leviticus chapter 21, verse 10. He that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, shall not uncover his head mm. nor rend his clothes. The man cannot uncover his head. So again, this is law. You talking about Leviticus is the law. Of God, that would mean the high priest can't pray never. <laughs> and he's the one who's our mediator, right? The high priest is one that's working at the, the, them works, right? He's the only man who can go inside the uh, that room on the day of atonement. What happened? What you said? Say it again. The, the the only man who is allowed to enter into a certain room. Yeah, yeah. It's on uh, the day of atonement. The holy of holies. Yeah, kind of the holy of holies. I didn't want to misrepresent or miss uh, quote it. But again. So, so you tell me the man. Who can only go into the holy of holy, the, the most holiest spot in the temple, has to have his head covered? I got a precept. Go ahead. This is John 11, starting at verse 49. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, hmm. nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Caiaphas had his head covered, by the way. Go right. ahead. According to the law. Sure. Right. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied mm. that Jesus should die for that nation. Again, we have a problem here because he every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. So the man is dishonoring his head while preaching the gospel of, uh, of our Lord and Savior. Right. Him dying for our nation is part of that gospel. Right. Because we have another chance at life, that repentance. And a lot of other things like grace, right? So again, the so to, you tell me David and Caiaphas, a high priest and the man after the most high's heart, are both going off, right? Go to Zechariah five. Let me show you something. Is Zechariah five? Zechariah three. My bad. Three and five. This is Zechariah chapter three, verse five. Mm. And I said, let them set a fair metre upon his head, mm -hmm. so that he said, if so, they set a fair metre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Right. So this is a. They're told to do something. Right. Almost messed up and said something. They're told to do something. Let them set a fair metre upon his head. Let's see what that word metre is. Right. A turban or a headdress. Look, it says a hood. The same word is used as a hood, right? I'm wearing a hoodie. If I throw that motherfucker on, it's going to cover my head. So this is something that, look, it says the strong, strong definition says a headdress. Cloth wrapped around a diadem, a hood, and a mitri. Mm. So again, we see another place where it's talking about covering your head. Right, and it says, let him put a fair metre upon his head. Right? What else do I got on that? Exodus 29 and 6. Oh, yeah, this one's called too. Starting at 6. Okay. Um, Exodus chapter 29. And I'm start at six. This is the high priest. Thou shalt take the garments and put the uh, and the robe of ephod. And the, is this the high priest? Now? No, so he's talking about the priest, right? Go ahead. Yeah, God. Talking about Aaron and the son. Okay. Um, Exodus twenty nine and six. And thou shalt put the mitri upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitri. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Right. This is the, we're going through an anointing session, right? Aaron and, and, and his sons. So watch this. So you're going to put a mitri upon the priest of God, those who are separated for the heavenly Father. He says these are mine. Out of all the tribes, the Levites are his. 
right? We're all his, but you understand what I'm saying. And thou shalt put a mitri. What is this mitri? A turban of the high priest, right? Another diadem, right? Um, turban of the high priest, absolute. This is a tiara. <laughs> Official turban of a king of a king. Mm. Or high priest, diadem, or mitri. Right, so again, we see another way. So we have Leviticus 21 and Exodus 29, both which where we find the law speaking about um, a man covering his head. So now jewels, right? Because I heard once before that we can't wear jewelry or earrings. Hmm. You want to go to Ezekiel 16? Right. So again, we're not allowed to wear jewels or and we're not allowed to wear earrings. Right. Um, what do you say? Necklaces. You can't wear necklaces. Um, so on as piercings. Right. So what earrings are. So in uh, Ezekiel 16. Right. It says God's grace to unfaithful. Yeah. Con, to unfaithful Jerusalem. Right. So here we see that the most high taking us out of our lowest state. Right. Take Taking us out of Egypt, we was nothing but slaves. We didn't have much, and he brought much blessings and much um, gifts and a culture and inheritance to us, right? Um, you see, go ahead. This is Ezekiel chapter 16, starting at 11. Mm -hmm. I decked thee also with ornaments, mm. and I put bracelets upon thy hands, mm. and a chain on thy neck, right? And I put a jewel on thy forehead. Earrings in my ears Oof. and a beautiful crown upon my head. So you're talking about the most high is the one who's putting them jewels on us, right? This is where we get our sauce at. This is where we get our flavor from is the heavenly father, right? Um, read the next verse, bro. Sure. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver. Mm. My raiment was a fine linen and silk and bordered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful. And now this prosper into a kingdom. Right. So again, the most high has given us all this game. That's what I call you. He's the one who gave us the game, right? The sauce. Right. The next verse speaking about them, other nations are gonna look at us and be like, damn, where'd they get this swag at? Right? Go to um Songs of Solomon, um one and ten. Uh not cheap. So, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. Again, we, we see here, thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels. Man got a grill, right? Well, uh, what does Florida say? They say, uh, they, 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 they show their little grills and they say glee, G-L-E-E. -E. <laughs> I don't know if Kodak started that, but that's what they say, right? And that's where they get it from is the Heavenly Father because he's the one who gave us that idea, right? Thy neck with chains of gold. So, again, you can wear that jewelry. That jewelry is something that is fine. Go to Deuteronomy 12, right? So, laws that you, we, we got the misconceptions, right? You can't wear jewels. That's BS, right? The most size one who decked us with jewels, Um you can't cover your head when you're praying or prophesying for a man, and you can't uncover your head when praying or prophesying for a woman. We already debunked that, right? Um, oh, matter of fact, go to Deuteronomy 12. That's what I'm at. Oh, yes, yeah, <laughs> um, because it, 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 it's two things I'm proving the law that, um, not proving, but I'm showing the law that people might not hear, and I'm another misconception, right? So, what was the first one that we got there? Um, oh, the uh. The dresses, you know, wearing that which pertains to a man. We already got that out of the way as well. Reverse. Because I was reading it. What's it say? Oh, it's right here. Verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 12, verse 15. Deuteronomy 12, verse 15. Deuteronomy 12, 15. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. God. Thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessing of the 
Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Mm -hmm. The unclean and the clean may eat thereof, as of the roebuck and as of the heart. Right. So again, to the casual eye, this sounds like I can eat whatever I want. Right. It says that thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates whatsoever thy soul thou soul lusts after. And it says the unclean and the clean may eat thereof. All right. Now I'll break it down, but I just want to read it in a different translation. All right. Can you see that? Yeah. This is Deuteronomy 12 and 15 in the CSB. But whenever you want, you may slaughter and eat meat within any of your city gates. According to the blessing that the Lord your God has given you, those who are clean or unclean may eat it as they would a gazelle or a deer. So I, first of all, I want to mention a gazelle and a deer are clear to eat, right? Those are clean foods. But again, but it's saying, but whatever you want, you may slaughter and eat it within uh, the gates, within any of your, your city gates, according to the blessing right. that the Lord your God has given you. He did not say we have the go ahead to eat pork that wasn't a blessing of ours he was not blessing us to eat these unclean foods but when you read it in the kjv it says the unclean and the clean may eat thereof right some people read this this is very few people i've, I've never heard this being brought out a lot but they may read this and say the unclean and the clean may eat thereof that's talking about unclean and clean foods that's why I read it in this, or I had Hadar read it in the CSB because it says those who are clean or unclean may eat it, right? So if you are a clean person, so say you haven't been, um, you know, uh, uh you didn't go to a, which I'm gonna get into. You're not unclean from touching a dead body, right? You didn't touch a dead body, so you're good. You're not unclean, right? Or say you did touch an un or, or a dead body. You are now unclean. You can eat. So whether you're clean, you can eat. Or whether you're unclean, you can eat. This is not talking about you can eat unclean and clean food. You got something you want to add? No, no. That's, shit, that's it. Come on. Uh, reverse 16. So now laws that you might not have heard of. Right? Verse 16. Uh -huh. Only you shall not eat the blood. Mm hmm you shall pour it upon the earth as water. Right. You're not allowed to eat blood. Right. When you get, get that steak and you see that. The, I don't know, understand why people think that's a delicacy. Everything that you are taught that is a delicacy when you eat it. Nine times out of ten, you're going off. Right. Crab is a delicacy. No, it's not. Crab is doo-doo food. Right. Don't eat that. But again, when you're eating that blood. That's not for you to eat, right? That is, it, it resembles life. Kind of got to so. Kind of go ahead. So Leviticus 17, verse 14. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start at 13. Leviticus 17 and 13. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with the dust. Okay, that may be eaten. Right. For it is the life of all flesh. Mm -hmm. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. My bad. I forgot to, I forgot to pull it up for y'all. But that's what he was reading. Right. Um. So again, you can't eat that blood. Right. So make sure you cook the meat all the way through. Right. Now for a chicken, it's not necessarily red, but you guys know what thaw chicken is. What all the? Why don't people eat chicken halfway uncooked? Because you can get salmonella and die. <laughs> I never thought about it. I've always I, I didn't like my food red. You know what I'm saying? I always like mine all the way cooked. All praise to the most side. So again, that's a law that you might not know of. Right. And it's reiterated in Acts 15. Right. Uh, Acts 15 starting there. Yeah. yeah, it's 20. Acts chapter 15, verse 20. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of 
idols mm -hmm. and from fornication mm -hmm. and from things strangled. So things that died of itself. Right. And from blood. Which is another law that you might not know of. Well, I mean, you probably can't keep it because you don't know what died or what not. You buy it at a um, supermarket. But you're not allowed to th eat things that are dead before you come across it, right? I got but, it. Go on, go on. Good. Oh, Leviticus 17, verse 15. And every soul that eateth that which died of itself, or that which was torn with beast, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. Then he shall be clean. Right. Don't eat it. Right. And that goes goes into showing what clean and unclean was meaning in uh, Deuteronomy. Right. Right. Uh, so again, right, misconception gotten out the way, right? And it's pretty simple when you read it slowly. Um, don't eat that blood, right? Cook your meat all the way through, right? Um, go to Deuteronomy 6. I don't know where I came across this. I think it was a video. Yeah, I think it was a video. Deuteronomy 6 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Uh, I'm going to start at 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, mm -hmm. and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So again, you're supposed to be talking about these laws constantly. You're supposed to be teaching your brothers the law constantly, right? You, you might come across a quick conversation. You don't have to necessarily talk about it every single time. But just know a lot of the times you need to be speaking about these laws of God because that's what gets us out of this place. Right? Read verse 8. Or verse 9. My bad. Verse 9. So lock, so lock. One sec. Deuteronomy 6 and 9. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Right? So again, it's called a mezuzah. Right? And you can get them on Amazon. They're not that expensive. Uh, How do you spell it? M-U-Z-Z something. Mezuzah. We both was on. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it is, right? So you just, you know, take a look. I got mine on a push uh -huh. pin or a thumbtack, whatever that is. Right? So you got, damn, those are cold. Right? All different designs, they're fairly cheap. Um, But what you do is like this one. Where is it at? Like this one, you write... The um uh, the laws of God on that little piece of paper and you stick it in that piece of paper, right? So it's important that you do that because it works just like your fringes. Is this is a constant reminder everywhere you go go to think about the laws of God, right? You have the fringes on you when you're outside the house or when you're inside the house, and then you also have that door. I look at it a lot. I look at my mezuzah a lot when I'm in my house, right? Because I'm mostly in my living room. Oops. But um I got uh Chief didn't touch on it in our last debate, but uh, proven that so-called Hispanics or Israelites, they found megalithic mezuzahs down there in Central and uh, uh, in South America in Paleo-Hebrew. You said mega what? Megalithic, like uh, stone tablets, like tons and tons of weight. Megalithic. Oh, yeah. Megalithic. Yeah. Uh, in Central. What in Christ? Pet. <laughs> yeah. This is all. Um, why does Google want to know my man? You're not knowing my location, goddamn. Yeah, yeah. Like, who bringing this out? All right. In the old Jewish quarter, several houses can be seen bearing the ooh. Okay, we'll let Hadar bring that out. We on. It's the next one. So yeah, a mezuzah, right? Make sure you buy one of them on Amazon. They're again, they're fairly cheap. Uh, I don't know if you can buy them at the store or not, but. You know, make sure you have them in your in your doorposts, right? You can also write laws on your walls. Um, I got them in my car. They're uh, 
It's like dog tags. They're hanging on my rear view mirror. Re re rear, view rear view mirror. Right? So make sure you have them laws around you everywhere you go. Um, while he's looking at that, I got you. I'll go ahead. This is uh, an excerpt from Old World Roots of the Cherokee, how DNA, ancient alphabets, and religion explain the origins of America's largest Indian nation by Donald N. Yates. This is on page 121. A tablet inscribed with an archaic version of the Ten Commandments, right, Paleo-Hebrew, and Hebrew was found in 1860 beneath a 40 foot high pile of stones near Newark, Ohio. Oh, this is in Ohio. And like I said, there's, I want to say, at least three other huge ones in South and Central America. But it reads Cyrus Gordon also studied this Jewish artifact. He describes it as a mezuzah from the ancient Middle East. Mm. This is found in Ohio. Uh, by the Europeans, uh, something that was in the Cherokees' possession. They see, I mean, it still works for Northern Kingdom. Yep. That is cold, right? Um, so a law on the tablet, because we basically know the gist of it, right? You can't cook, you can't eat, you can't buy, oh, you can't eat, my bad, you ate it, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> you can't cook and you can't um, uh, buy or sell, right? We all, we all know that, and you can't work. If you got to work, you know, your hour shot knows, your hour knows, you know, you got to go to work. Um, we're in captivity. But is Exodus 16 and 29. So I can one more time. Exodus 16 and 29. Okay. Right. Now, I was speaking to one of our own priests. Right, your ass, and um, you know, we chopping it up, and he kind of broke this down to me through the spirit and power, um, which was beautiful. Right, go ahead. Exodus sixteen verse twenty nine, and it reads: See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Mm -hmm. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Right. Stay in crib. Right. It's a day of rest. Right. And I was speaking to him, and he was going through a lot of reasons why that um why that was. You know what I'm saying? That powerful brother. But again, it's it's a day of rest. You know what I'm saying? Stay in your house. Right. You ain't gotta be going up and you know, oh, I already bought the movie tickets yesterday. Nah, buddy. Stay in your house. If you don't need to go outside your house or um outside of do, right outside of doing the work of the Lord, right, you stay in your crib. Right. right. You don't need to leave. Right. Unless, you know what I'm saying, you gotta go to the hospital, you know, what I'm saying stuff like that. That, that. That's understandable. Right? Um, Deuteronomy eleven and nine. So again, Sabbath, stay in your crib. Don't leave your crib. Uh, make sure you get that mezuzah, put it on your doorpost, right? Whatever you see fit and where you're going to put it. Um, the commandments that, matter of fact, I forgot the commandments I wrote with my mezuzah. Look at you. I know them. I know it's the two that Christ taught because he says these uh, two hang all the law, right? So I know that for a fact, but I'm not Some sure if I. Ones. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Um, 11 and. Nineteen. This is Deuteronomy eleven, verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. And you shall. I'm gonna start at eighteen. Therefore, you shall lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your head, that they may upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Mm -hmm. And you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Right. So again, the most important, not the most important, uh, you got to get it for yourself, first and foremost. You have to learn these laws by yourself and learn, understand the misconceptions on these laws. Right. So you don't go falsely teaching your children something, say it, it's a sin. If you uncover your head, not knowing that you are teaching yourself a sin and you're teaching your child a sin, with, that's like three sins. You done committed three <laughs> sins. You done added to the law. 
set a stumbling block for the children, right? Christ spoke about it. Uh, what is the other one I was just talking about? Oh, and you're saying that other people are sinning if they do that, right? right. Accusing them of sin. Right. So you're committing three sins while doing that, right? Just be, you know, just want to let that know. So make sure you study it for yourself. Bind them for a sign upon your, your hand, and they may be frontless between your eyes. Don't get no tattoo, right? I'm just talking about I'm surprised that one dude didn't bring this up. <laughs> Boy, if y'all would have heard that debate. Um, so again, make sure you understand these laws, right? Equip it for yourself and then teach your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, when thou risest up, always teach your children the laws of God. And I preach up. Right, go ahead. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter nine. Chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. let, let thy talk be with the wise mm -hmm. and all thy communication in the laws of the most high. Right. So, again, you want to be talking about these laws. Now, again, it's cool to, you know, chop it up, you know what I'm saying, with something that has nothing to do with God. You know what I'm saying? You, who's the best rapper? You know what I'm saying? Who, who's the best basketball player? That's fine. But make sure you always talk about the laws of God to keep you in that spirit. Because, again, when you begin to deal with a bunch of, uh, uh, worldly men who are constantly smoking they drinking all the time they're doing this they're doing that you're gonna eventually latch onto that spirit right and or that spirit's gonna latch onto you right and it's gonna make you harder to walk in this walk if you're doing that so make sure that you're always talking with the wise and always having your communication with those that that want to uh, uh, learn more or who have learned more than you so that you may progress yourself in the truth right um but the dead body Right, because a lot of us go to funerals, right? Numbers 19 and 11. This will be the last one. So we understand the mezuzah, right? Put that mezuzah up on your doorpost. Um, teach your children all day, every day, right? Covering your head and uncovering your head, that's not in the law, right? A woman can wear pants if she chooses to. Now, if her husband tells her not to wear pants, she shouldn't wear pants. Right. The husband's OK with it. The husband's OK with it. Um, so women don't look down on another woman because she's wearing pants. Um, what was the other one? Uh, um, the dead body. We better get into that. What was the other one? I, didn't, I, I was reading, so I wasn't paying attention as you listed them off. So we got the pants, the veil, right, covering your head. We have the doorposts, the mezuzah, blood. Yeah, bl blood, right? Don't be cooking meat all the way through, right? And make sure that you don't, oh, I can't even say that because we don't know what is died of itself or not. Oh, and uh, we talked about those being ceremon ceremonially clean or unclean can right. eat whatever God deems we can eat. Right. So again, it's, um, it's a video to help you, you know, rightly divide the word of truth and that way you might be able to teach somebody else and then also you know might learn some laws yourself right uh but start at 11 Bible for sure. 19 and 11. Okay. numbers 19 and 11. he that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days so you go to um a funeral you know it's an open casket you don't put your hand on them it's not a sin i'm not saying it's a sin but just know that you're unclean for seven days. So try to stay away from the brothers who's doing the work or try to, you know, stay in your house so that you remain unclean. Because anybody you begin touching is now unclean. So make sure you just stay in your house. Again, it's not a sin to be unclean. Christ was unclean at one point. Christ was touching a whole lot of dead bodies. Christ got touched by a woman who had our menstrual cycle, right? That's why I put part one because we got a part two coming. <laughs> All right, verse 12. Yeah, sure. Wait, if, if, so... Niggas would have to say that if being unclean is a sin, you would have to then say that Yahweh Shai was a sinner. Keep that in mind. Not my G's, so, nigga. Not <laughs> my G's. Sweet Go baby ahead. G's. You good. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, verse 12. That's a lot. Verse 12. He shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. Right. If he purify not himself on the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. 
Uh, wash your body. Read the uh, next verse, Bob. Sorry. Whosoever toucheth the dead body of any man that is dead and purifieth not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean, and his uncleanness is yet upon him. So we don't have a Levitical priesthood. We don't have like a set of order and sign. But definitely wash your body on the third day. I mean, people should wash themselves. Wash your ass every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that'll solve this, right? But make sure that you, in fact, take that time to understand on that third day is that day of purification. Right? So it's not just a normal shower. No, you are keeping the law of God, right? Make sure you wash your clothes, too. Right? Go to verse 14. Oh, uh, with that third day, the water of separation is is a, a specific ritual that the Levites would do. Right. And like brother said, because the Levites aren't in their office at the moment, you no know, temple to do these so so called rituals. Uh, we we going on grace. Right. Um, you see. Uh, verse what? Uh, 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. This is the law when a man dieth in a tent. So say a man died in your crib, right? Go ahead. All that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. Same thing. So you enter a room with a dead body, you are unclean seven days. That's that church house. Uh huh. So even, <laughs> so even if you didn't touch the body, it's Still unclean. Just know that, right? Read verse 15. The church house will be clean all day or day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and every open, you said 15. Right? Yeah, come. And every open vessel which hath no covering bound upon it is unclean. So you got a water bottle that was in the crib? Unclean, right? You have a, a, a open can of tomato sauce. <laughs> You're unclean, all right? Don't, don't touch it, right? That is to be thrown out. Right, let me see if I uh, touch one last one with the sword of the dead, dead body. Right, okay, so it's still you touching dead bodies, right? So, again, we don't have that Levitical priesthood to do that, you know, water of separation, but I mean, we rehearse the righteous acts, right? We also don't have Jerusalem to go to celebrate the Passover, but we rehearse the righteous acts, you know what I'm saying? Um, so again, just know that you're unclean seven days when you touch a dead body, that includes ashes, by the way. Yes, ashes. Young clean. Right? Who was it you who handed me ashes one time? Hell no. That must have been my dad. My dad just <laughs> casually gave me a jar. I'm how like, you go? How, how you gonna mistake me for your dad? No, we were at the moving company. Oh. You remember that? Yeah, we were at the moving company and we had picked up something. I didn't know it was ashes until she told me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Bullshit. I said, man, you don't make me unclean for seven days. Who is this? That's my own. Oh, no, I mean, as long as, as long as, if it's oh, yeah, urn, yeah, yeah. as long as you don't open it, you'll be good. But yeah, do not open the urn. <laughs> Boy, I put that thing down so quick. I didn't want to break it though. So it was quick, but it was steady. All right. So again, um, I hope that was edifying. Hope y'all got caught. Uh, y'all had answers to some of the questions going around. Or y'all might have had an answer that y'all didn't know. Right? So uh like the video, share the video. Um comment. Facebook user. I don't know. It says that with all of them. Uh, but it says it um I go in the chat. Uh I don't know who said that. I think Omar said that. And that was a rock and that was Omar. But um so yeah, so uh comment because you can still comment on the video after I done posted it and did it live already. Comment something you want to learn, a topic you want to learn, a discussion you or a discussion, a verse you want to learn, something that you want to be talked about. Maybe it has nothing to do with the Bible, but you just want our opinion, right? Um, comment it so we can talk about it. You have a verse that's been bugging you, you're confused about it. Post the verse. Can you, you know, explain this for me in your next video? Right? It could be a five-minute video, right? But with that, you got anything? 
God damn. <laughs> with, that, <laughs> with that, I want to say call uh, Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. That's all praise to the Most High in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Load a eardrum.